Look, new t-shirt. Ooh, very nice. New t-shirt from, who's it from? From Killer Planes, from Steve Lachlan. Killerplanes.com. There you go. Thank you, Steve. Now, on with the video. And today I want to talk about BEX, UBEX, SBEX, BEX, and all the other forms of voltage regulators, because that's what a BEC actually is. A BEC, SBEC, UBEC, we'll just call them BEX for the time being, they're all designed to drop a big voltage down to a small voltage. And why would you want to do that? Well, in the old days of nitro motors and even on gliders today, generally speaking you have a battery pack that powers your radio control equipment and mostly this battery pack was 4.8 volts in the days of long wire then when 2.4 came along and um, better servos and things it went up to six volts instead of going from four cells they went to six to five cells which gave six volts and you know that was a good voltage and that was fine but now now of course everything is electric and electric models use much higher voltage batteries you get some with two cells, but even those are 8.4 volts when they're fully charged. And you more often get three, four, five, six cell packs. And of course, you can't just plug your radio gear into a six cell pack. Unless you've got a high tech, because the high tech Aurora does that. The, the receivers for the high tech Aurora have a high voltage setting so and plug them straight into your six volt pack. As long as you set it up properly, that's a really good idea actually. It gets rid of that need from the receiver's perspective only to have a separate voltage supply of course you could have your servos powered by something even in that situation so even with the high tech system you're going to need a voltage regulator to take the 22 volts of your six cell pack down to the five volts that all the radio or five or six volts that all the radio gear is expecting so that's where these becs come in so let's have a look at the different type of becs let's look at how some of them work and let's look at how you choose a bec for the type of model that you're going to be building and here is a delightful selection of becs for you to have a look at there's big ones like this. This is uh, this one will uh, you can plug this into your six cell lipo pack and it will drop the 22 point something volts, 26 volts fully charged, uh, also down to the five or six volts you need for your receiver. And your servos has a little jumper on the side to select whether you want five volts or six volts because you know depends on how you want to set it up. So that's one bec. Here's another bec, something similar. This is also a five amp bec. Um, it's a little bit smaller and. Uh, you know, the way these are designed, you know, a lot of them use the same chips. In fact, if we look carefully, and we may find that, as you can see, although they're in a slightly different place, they're using pretty much the same chips to do the same job. There's not a lot of difference between the various uh, BEC options in terms of the components they use and uh, the claimed capabilities, the current that they can handle. However, as you can see, they can certainly make them to lots of different size packages and charge different amounts of money. Uh, they all do the one thing though, they take a high voltage and they convert it to a lower voltage. Now, most of them are fixed voltage output. So basically you put in your battery voltage on this side and out on the other side comes the voltage to drive your RC gear. Some of them, as I said, have a little jumper so you can select five or six volts. Some of them are just five volts or six volts or whatever you choose when you buy them, you can't change them. Some actually have the ability to vary the voltage. Little control pot here, you can turn that little thing and change the output voltage. Wind it up or down to suit your requirements. Uh, and then even little things like this have a similar kind of a setup where you can basically get in there. There's a little tiny potentiometer in here which lets you vary the voltage to whatever level you want. And of course another place you'll find a BEC is in a lot of the ESCs that you buy. They have a built-in BEC. See this one has, it's a 30 amp ESC and it has a UBEC, it says on the front, it has a UBEC built into it. So that as well as controlling the speed of your motor, it also outputs voltage that can power your radio gear. So this is the most common form of BEC most people will encounter. It's in an ESC and it just means you don't have to worry about anything. You just put your ESC in, connect up your battery on one side, your motor on the other side, plug this into your throttle channel and everything's taken care of for you. But there are some traps for young players in that. I've seen a few, more than a few models crash because these BECs in here have some limitations. And to understand what those limitations are, we're going to have to go over to the whiteboard. So let's take a look at some of the fundamentals about BEX, SBEX, UBEX. As I said, they're all voltage regulators. They're all a form of voltage regulator. But there are two types. There are two types of BEX. And it's important you know the difference because it can make a huge difference in the kind of performance and how well they work and whether they're suited to the job that you plan to use them on. Now, the first type is linear BEC. 
linear back, that's the type you find in a lot of the cheap, you know, the 10, 20, 30 amp ESCs, and they're good for two amps or three amps, and they're the ones you just plug in and forget about, easy peasy. Linear becks uh, are great for low power models, when you've only got a small model, small foamy, you know, three or four servos, little nine gram servos, and then these linear becks, they're gonna do the job, okay. Also, if you're running from a relatively small battery pack, you know, like a, a two cell or a three cell, maybe even a four cell, then a linear beck is gonna do the job okay. But when you get into something bigger, something with more voltage, something with more servos, you need a switching beck, which is normally called an s beck. And an s beck works in a totally different way to a linear beck. So I think I'll show you the difference. Okay, so here is a situation where we've got a linear, linear beck, and we have 12 volts here, three cell LiPo pack, 12 volts. That's anywhere from 12.6 down to 9.9, .9, depending on how well it's charged. And that's one thing that a beck does too. It, regardless of what happens here on the battery side, it keeps a constant five volts out. So it doesn't just drop a certain amount of voltage. It just, it also, it also makes sure that the output is stable. It doesn't matter how much load you put on it or how much the input voltage goes up and down. It's a regulator. So it regulates the voltage uh, by keeping it constant. Now, here we go. If we look at this, we do some simple maths. Let's do some simple maths. We've got 12 volts here. We've got five volts there. There's seven volts missing. Where's it going? <laughs> you know, like you can't just, you know, voltage cannot disappear. It has to go somewhere. So what happens is if we have a little multimeter here, Here's our little multimeter, and I'll do an old one, old-fashioned one, right? And we have another multimeter here, old-fashioned meter, it's got a needle, woohoo! Um, okay, if we put our multimeter leads on here, it'll say 12 volts, as you expect. If we put our multimeter lead on here, well, both the leads, we'll get 5 volts, as you would expect. Now, what happens is if we put in a third multimeter, like this, and we put its leads on there, and on there. So we're going to measure the voltage across our beck. We'll find that this one reads 7 volts. So there's actually 7 volts of electricity across the beck. The beck is dropping 7 volts. So it's going from 5 down to, to uh, from 12 down to 5. And that's it. Well, that's fine. That's what you want it to do, isn't it? But the problem is as we as I showed you in an earlier video on electric you know basic electrical theory, if you haven't seen that go and look at it. Basic electrical theory, voltage and current produce power. When we have voltage and current, you end up with power. Now, let's say this is one amp. Remember I showed you that. Let's do the, um, the good old um, power equals current times voltage. Okay, so we need the current, the voltage, and we'll be, work, be able to work out the power. Okay, so here we go. Let's say we're drawing one amp. A radio gear draws one amp. It's not very much. Piece of cake to a two amp bec. Uh, at five volts, then we can say, okay, um, that's fine, but that one amp must also be coming out of here. With a linear beck, the amount of current that comes out of the beck is the same as the current that goes into it. So it doesn't change the current, the current remains the same, it just, because current is like, think of this as plumbing, you've got water flowing in here, the same amount of water must flow in here as flows out there, or it would back up and overflow, right? And current is the flow of water, or well, water is, the flow of water is like current. So here we go, so we must have one amp here as well. So let's do some sums, we can do some math. Sorry to bore you with math, but it's quite important in this case. We have um, one amp and we have seven volts across our beck. So here we go, we've got seven volts, one, oops, one amp multiplied equals seven watts. Okay, because power in watts is equal to the current times the voltage. So we have a current of one amp, and we have a voltage of seven, so we've got seven watts. Now, seven watts is a lot of power, actually. It's quite a bit of power. It, uh, it certainly makes things get warm. So this beck is actually going to have to get rid of, because it's getting rid of some of the voltage, and it's doing it at one amp, it has to get rid of seven watts of power. And that's gonna make a little beck quite warm, actually. It's gonna get really warm. Now, if you're drawing two amps, of course, you'd be having to get rid of 14 watts of power. Now, this isn't good for a number of reasons. When you get rid of power like this, you create heat, and electronics don't like heat. And just as importantly, you're wasting power. If you drew two amps out of the setup through that beck, you're wasting 14 watts. That's a fair bit of your old battery is just going up in heat. You don't want to waste that. You want it to push the plane along or run things for longer. So the good old linear beck is simple, easy to use, quite effective, but wasteful.
And also, this heat thing becomes a problem because let's, this is why you won't find a linear BEC on a system that's designed to work with a six cell pack. Because let's do, let's change some of the figures. This was a three cell pack. Let's go to a six cell pack. Let's assume we've got 24 volts. Okay, 24 volts in, five volts out. Let's do the math. We've got 24 volts minus five volts means we have 19 volts. The seven volt figure here becomes 19 volts now. Ooh, it's getting high. 19 volts. And if we still have one amp, that's 19 volts times one amp, that would be 19 watts at one amp. Now, if we went to two amps, it would be 38 watts. That's a lot of watts. That's Soldering irons are often only 20 watts, 25 watts, 30 watts. So it'd be as hot as a soldering iron. <laughs> Obviously, things would melt. So we can't really easily practically use a linear BEC when we're running with more silica, bigger batteries, because they just get too hot and then they'll fail. Or they'll have to be so big and have massive heat sinks that it just would be too heavy to put in your model. So that's why these linear BECs are only in the small stuff designed for the little models, your AXNs and your, you know, your park flyers. That's where your linear BECs come in. So, what do we do if we want to use radio gear in a plane that has six cells? Or maybe it has more servos and it draws more than one or two amps. Because as I said, when the amps go up, the power goes up. And when the voltage goes up, the power goes up. This is the power that the ESC has to get rid of, it has to waste, has to burn off so that we don't put too much voltage into our servos. Well, that's where the switching bec comes in. So here's our switching bec. It's the same as before. We may have 12 volts, a three cell pack through the S bec, and out comes five volts on the other side. So why, why would you use it? A switching bec is more complicated than a linear bec. Costs a little bit more, and it's got more components in it. So in theory, there's more to fail. So why would you bother with an S bec at all? Well, obviously, as I said, once you start running more voltage on this side or drawing more current on that side, then you need something that's more efficient than a linear BEC, and that's what SBECs are. And to understand how SBECs are more efficient than linear BECs, we have to look at how they work. And this is how a linear BEC works. Basically, it's just like having your 12 volts and a resistor and your RC gear out here. Here's your RC gear. That's how your linear BEC works. It's just like having a resistor in there and a resistor, let's draw some analogies, people say, oh, that's not quite right, but this is a broad analogy, so hopefully I'll help people understand. A resistor is like friction to electricity. When you have a resistor in the circuit, then it impedes the flow of electricity, just like the brakes on your car impede the rotation of the wheels. You know, you put the brakes on and the wheels drag and you slow down. There's less, you get less speed, you don't travel so fast. Same with electricity. When you put a resistor in there, it impedes the flow of electricity, so the voltage drops down. In this case, you know, you could drop down to five volts. So that's electrical friction as a resistor, but just as the brakes on your car get really hot, if you are, you know, riding them all the time, then a resistor that's doing a lot of work, that's doing a lot of resistance, or reducing the voltage, will also get hot. That's why these BECs get so, the, the linear BECs get so damn hot and you can't use them on high power systems. They just get too hot. So a resistor, simple resistor, or a regulator that looks like a resistor, is just not gonna work. So here's the other way we do it. We have our 12 volts, or whatever voltage comes in, and we have a little switch. And then here's our RC gear. What this does is it switches off and on. That's all it does. And it's, it's quite simple. This is on all the time, but it causes the voltage to drop over the resistor. This switches off and on really, really quickly so that sometimes you've got 12 volts here, but a lot of the time you've got nothing. So if we looked at, uh, put an oscilloscope, let's say we, I'll do this, I'll get the oscilloscope out in a minute and I'll show you. On the input here, if we have our oscilloscope, we'll just see a straight line which is at 12 volts, okay? After the switch here, what we would see is something like this. And this is the voltage going up and down on the output here, right? This is still 12 volts. So it's going up to 12 volts, but it's also going down to zero. And it's doing that off and on really quickly. It does it so quickly that effectively 
it all blurs, you know, it blurs into one as far as everything's concerned. This voltage doesn't go up and down, it blurs, so you end up with a kind of an averaging, which is called integration, big word, just means averaging. So you end up with a voltage that actually looks like this, it's just the average of this, so it goes sort of a bit like this. And that's at 5 volts. So all it's doing is basically saying, well, you know, let's take this piece here and fill in there, and this piece here, fill in there. So it takes that wavy line and turns it into a smoother line at a lower voltage. Just, it just knocks the tops off and pushes it into the troughs. And that's the filtering you get on your S-spec. That's, um, it converts the square wave into a nice, relatively smooth voltage. But the, you can see what happens here. Now, as I say, if we draw the analogy with the brakes on your car, if you lock up the brakes on your car, so you're driving along and you hit the pedal really hard, you haven't got ABS, the wheels lock up, well then everything stops moving as far as the brakes are concerned. The tyres will squeal and smoke will come off, but not interested in the tyres, only interested in the brakes. If you lock up your brakes, nothing gets hot because there's no movement anymore. It's all stopped and you can't have any friction, you can't have any heat generated by friction if nothing's moving. So once the calipers on your brakes clamp onto the disc and the disc stop turning, no more heat's coming out of there. And it's the same with this. When the switch is open, there's no current flowing. And as I said before, go back to this old formula that we have here, which is power equals current times voltage, right? So if the voltage is zero, if the current is zero, such as when this switch is open, you can't have any power. Because it doesn't matter how big the voltage is, if you're multiplying by zero, the power will still be zero. So when the switch is open, no power is being wasted by the BEC, the s -BEC. Also, when the switch is closed, when this actually closes, then although there's current flowing, the current will be flowing through here, this is a, effectively a short circuit, so there's no voltage over here. If you put a meter on it, there'd be zero volts. And again, if you've got zero volts, doesn't matter how much current flows, there's no power wasted, there's no power lost there. So by switching off and on, this can regulate the output voltage without wasting any power. Well, it does waste a little bit, but it wastes virtually none. You can get 90 plus percent efficiency out of these things. So you're only wasting, you're only wasting a tiny amount of power, but you can switch huge amounts of current. Five amps. At five volts at five amps, you can have 25 watts coming out of there and you'll only be wasting a watt or two in your switching regulator. That's the beauty of the switching regulator. It's either on or it's off, but it does it really quickly. It's a bit like, try and draw another analogy. Let's say you uh, walk into a room and the lights are on, and you want to make it a bit dimmer. Well, imagine if you flick the light switch off and on really, really quickly, that would, the, the light would dim down. Now, you can't do it by hand fast enough not to notice that it's going off and on, but if you had something flicking it really, really fast, then the lights would just dim, and it would look like they're running on a lower voltage, but they're not. They're just running on the same mains voltage, but just less often, less often. So they're going off and on so quickly, it all just merges into one, and it seems like you've lowered the voltage. That's what happens here. And that's what all the electronics on the switching regulator do. They just control this little switch, and then they take all these pulses, make them into a smooth, constant voltage. So let's go over to the bench. I'll grab one of these becks, we'll throw the scope on it, we'll have a look and see if we can spot the 12 volts coming in, this switching line here, and then the smoother voltage coming out after it's been all smoothed in and regulated properly. It's to the bench. So here we are, we've got the oscilloscope here. This is hooked up to a little UBEC switching back down here, feeding it from my bench top power supply. I've got 12 volts or 12.1 volts going into the switching back at the moment. And if I turn on my multimeter and I put the probes, oh, bit of a mess on the bench. This never happened before. So it's novel, it's interesting. Just move some stuff around. Put the probes on the output of the, I'm going to move the multimeter into shot I suppose so you can see it properly, try and get the reflection off, a bit hard with all these, so I'll move it over here so you can see hopefully, there we go. So let's see how many volts uh, the UBIC or the switching BIC is putting out, here we go, just go across the output here, should say 5 volts, 5.3 volts, that's near enough, it's putting out 5.3 volts, now one thing you'll notice is that at the moment it says 5.3 volts. I'm going to try and hold this on here. I'm going to wind the voltage of my power supply up and down. So you can see now 12 volts, 12.1 12 volts in, 5.3 volts out. I'll wind this down to 10 volts. See, it's still 5.3 volts out. That's what the regulator does. It doesn't matter what volt within reason. What doesn't matter what voltage is actually going in here. The output remains the same. So we'll go back up to 12 volts. There we go. 
and you can see still 5.3 so it's regulating really well that's great because obviously your battery voltage is going to go up and down but the reason we're here on the bench is to have a look at what i was saying about the the the, the voltage being chopped up into little chunks that are then sort of reassembled into a lower voltage so what i'm going to do now is put the camera on the scope and i'll show you the different parts in the circuit which and what the, what the signal looks like in those parts so you can see what i showed you on the whiteboard actually happening in real life Okay, I've got the oscilloscope calibrated. As you see here, every one of these little gradients, which hopefully you can see on the video, is 5 volts. So if I put this across the 12 volt input, it should jump up just over two little gradients or two little measurement marks there to just above the second one. And here we go. Here we go. As you can see, it's just above the... There's, there's one, two, and a bit, which is 5, 10, 12 volts. So that's what's going into our... UBEC. It's pretty simple to see. Easy. Now obviously if this is 5 volts per graduation then the output should be just one step up. We'll go up one on the graduation and there we go. There's the output. You can see it's measured the voltage. It's gone up one graduation on the screen. So that's the input. That's the output. Let's see if we can find where it's doing all that chopping. Making um, basically chopping up the 12 volts into little bursts of 12 volts to get turned into 5 volts later. There we go. So this is that, that what I was talking about. Notice here, this is actually 12 volts, and that's 0 volts. So it goes from 12 to 0 to 12 to 0 to 12 to 0, as it's basically turning a little switch off and on really, really quickly. Now, obviously, at the moment, it's about, yeah, it's off a little more than it's on, because we want 5 volts. So, obviously, if it's on half as much, if you're putting 12 volts in and it's on half the time, off half the time, we'd get 6 volts. But... It's actually slightly less than that because we want five. So if I change that voltage we're putting into the UBEC, then the actual gap between the pulses and the size of the pulses should change. Let's see if we can get it to make a wider pulse by lowering the voltage. If I go down to 10 volts on the input, it should be on half the time and off half the time. Let's see what happens. I'm winding the voltage down now. You see the voltage is actually coming down because we're only putting less voltage in. And I just go, there is, there's 10 volts. And you can see the width of the pulse is almost exactly the same as the width of the gap. So it's on half the time, it's off half the time. So if you take 10 volts and, and you average it with zero, you get 5 volts. So it's still doing 5 volts. Now, as I wind up the voltage, of course, it'll be turned on less of the time because there's more voltage going through. You watch, you'll see the voltage go up and that pulse gets narrower. So when I go to, I don't think I should, but I'll go to 15 volts and see what happens. Hopefully the smoke won't come out. Here we go, 15 volts. Now it's only on for one third of the time because five volts is one third of 15 volts. It's pretty simple really, isn't it? And that's how it converts a high voltage into a low voltage, just by turning things off and on really, really quickly. I'm back down to 10 volts now. And then what it does is once it's got this horrible square waveform, you can't feed that into your receiver because it's like turning your receiver off and on and your servos off and on all the time. So what it does is it goes through a coil and a capacitor. And remember I mentioned a while ago, a coil is like a flywheel, you know, an inductor. It's like a flywheel. Those chokes that we had on the Ubex, they're like a flywheel. Once you kick the current going, it keeps it going. So it basically smooths it out. I'll move to the point here on the other side of the smoothing circuit. There you go. It's smooth as a baby's bottom because now we've filled in all the gaps, we've averaged it out. That's how switching BEC works. So there you go. That's probably more than you ever wanted to know about BECs and what they do and how they work and why we have the different types. So bottom line is, for the little stuff, you know, two, three cells, four cells, where you've got three or four nine gram servos, yeah, yeah, the built-in linear BEC on your little 20, 30 amp speed control, it's gonna do fine, it's gonna work just perfectly. When you get to the bigger models though, some of the, you know, four cell, five cell, six cell, well, built-in BECs, not always a good idea. If you've got a model that's got a lot of servos, an EDF with retracts and flaps and, and goodness knows what else, then inbuilt BEC, not a good idea. Best to go for a separate UBEC and best to make sure it's a switching UBEC. Most of the separate UBECs are switching UBECs, but you can, you can soon tell because switching UBECs are, are not very heavy, they're not that big, and they'll handle currents of three to five amps, which is what you need for some of those larger models. So there you go. If you've got questions, as undoubtedly you will have, because I've done my best, but it's a complicated subject. If you've got questions, put them in the bottom of this video. If you've got a comment, put it there too. If you want to see some other aspects of what I've been talking about, if you want something explained a little more thoroughly, then, you know, 
ask and I'll do my best to oblige. In the meantime, thank you for watching RC Model Reviews and I'll see you again really soon from the bench at RC Model Reviews. Bye for now.